What's up guys and welcome back to Retro Gamer Gen X's Retro Gaming and Computing Channel. In today's video, we're going to continue working on this 600XL here that on the last video, if you've missed it, we determined that this socket here was bad. Now after the video, I did kind of pull all the chips again and reseated them again and I found that this socket here was bad as well. Now I ordered a whole bunch of sockets online, just a whole bunch of different sizes and everything, so I just got them. And so I was going to go ahead and resocket the whole board, but that's just a lot of work for nothing. If I've determined that these two here are the ones that are causing the issue, then those are just the ones I'm going to replace. So now another thing we're going to do here is we're going to install the AV mod for it as well so that we can uh, get composite signal out because this is the NTSC version of the 600XL so it doesn't have that, it just has the RF out. So we're going to change that up a little bit. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started guys. Now you guys might be wondering why I'm not using my desoldering pump to do this because uh, I have one of those automatic <laughs> desoldering pumps. Uh, the reason is because my tips are shot and I need to order new tips. So. These never fail you either, so you can always use one of these old school manual desoldering pumps and they work just fine. So it might take a little bit longer and you gotta have a little bit more patience, but it'll definitely work. So let's go ahead and get some of these chips pulled here. Now I did order uh, this chip as well because with this having a floating ground and just it wasn't working right, I don't know how long it wasn't working right. Uh, I just ordered the chip. I mean, it was less than a buck to get it, so I just ordered a new one, just to be safe. But yeah, I should have just pulled that out with my fingers, guys, because literally it's that easy to pull that out. Alright, the other chip we got to do here is, this is the memory decoder chip. That one has kind of given us some grief, too. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one out. Now, this one is a little easy to pull out, but it is still not all that easy either so I think I'll be careful with this one all right there we go put it on my thing of chips I got here all right so there we go so there's a bad sockets let me go ahead and zoom into these sockets again, guys, and kind of show you what was going on with them. So if you guys can see here, this is the one that we determined the last time to be the bad socket. Let me get my little pointer thing here. So this is the one we determined that it was a bad socket. And uh, especially right here, I think that's what, pin eight, wasn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, pin eight. And that goes to this chip, which this chip works in conjunction with all the rest of these to create the RAS and CAS signal for the memory, for the row um, address strobe and the column address strobe. So that's how it kind of reads the memory in like a, almost like an array somewhat <laughs> best way I can explain it but uh, yeah without that working correctly it would just black screen the computer so that was the big one now on this chip um, let me pull this down here now on this chip here I think it was pin 12 uh, but you can tell that these pins aren't the best either they just they just aren't it's just yeah but I think it was pin 12. Let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, it was pin 12 here. It just wasn't getting a good connection either. And honestly, I know it goes to the MMU, but I forgot what line it was. Um, I think it was the input line from the MMU or something like that. But that wasn't working. That was causing a black screen too when I had good continuity over here and everything. So... Yeah, it was, it was just kind of a mess, guys. So we're going to go ahead and pull those two. Can I get them in one frame? That would be good. So we're going to go ahead and pull these two sockets here and go ahead and replace them with good uh, machine pinhole sockets like these ones here. So... 
Let's go ahead and get that started, guys. Alright guys, so there we go. We got it all desoldered here. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the flux and then uh, we'll go ahead and get that so those sockets installed and see what happens here. Um, also, I'm, before I do any of that, I'm going to clean it up and actually kind of test all these traces just to make sure that everything looks okay. But yeah, let me get everything cleaned up first. Funny as you guys can tell right where I cleaned the board because there was still flux on it from manufacturing so where I cleaned it's really clean. <laughs> but let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on it and just make sure these traces look okay and then we're going to test them out. Alright so here's the traces here and yeah they all look pretty, pretty solid and pretty good still. The vias look good. That one's a little shaky, but I think it'll be okay. No trace going to it here. It must be on the other side of the board. So that looks pretty good. This one looks even better. So I'm not seeing any traces that are ripped or torn or vias, traces, anything. Looks pretty good. Let's check the other side of the board. Yeah, that looks pretty good too. Not seeing empty problems there, guys. So, let's just go ahead and check all the traces and make sure they're okay before we do anything else. So, I hate to put these in and then have to take them back off to repair some traces. Looks like all the traces on that ship look good, so let's try this one here. Alright, so it looks like we're good to go here, guys. Um, I don't see any problems with it, so it looks like we're groovy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put these sockets in and, uh, yeah, put the chips in and it should fire up. Then we'll go ahead and put the AV mod on. So we got those sockets on now. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in and just see how those joints look. Yeah, so those look pretty good. I don't see any uh, 
any bridges where they shouldn't be, this is a bridge where it should be. Looks all good too. So it looks like we're good to go, guys. So let me go ahead and get this uh, these chips in, and we'll fire her up and see if she turns on. All right, guys. So it looks like everything's all in. Uh, the chips are in, sockets are in, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and give it a test fire to see if she actually fires up and doesn't give us the uh, the black screen of death anymore. And uh, yeah, see what happens. And then after that, if everything's working right, we'll go ahead and get this AV mod installed. Yep, looks like she's working. Everything's good to go. No more dodgy sockets. Good to go, guys. I am so happy about that. So now let's go ahead and get this uh, AV mod board all put together and see if we can get this to work here. This is just one of those cheap Chinese kits I pick up off of Ally Express for like nothing. And one thing I gotta say guys is uh, the transistors in these kits, watch out for them because yeah, if you get them with the resistors and the transistors I've had a lot of these transistors be fake. <laughs> so watch out for that. Now this one here is actually one of mine. Um, I took the one out of this one and put my own transistor that I have in here. All right, now I'm colorblind as all hell, guys. So I can't read resistor bands because, yeah, I'm like totally colorblind. So I actually have to see what they are here. Guys, there's the final product there on the bottom on the top here so let's go ahead and get this installed into the guitar right now and see how it works now as you can see like right above up here uh, I put how this whole thing goes together uh, the little schematics on it so it shows which pins of the RF modulator here you connect to so you got pin 1 pin 2 pin 3 and pin 4 like that and then what I'm gonna do is put the two RCA jacks in the back right here there's a little space like right here I can put two jacks one for audio one for video so that's what I'm gonna do so let's go ahead and get this started here guys um, first thing I want to do is just see if this is actually correct these like schematics I got up here because I'm not too sure this is just something I found online and um, really the same AV mod is the same one you use in the 7800 the same one in the 5200 the same one in the 2600 so it's kind of a universal AV mod is the you know just an Atari AV mod <laughs> But really what we should do is just test to see if it works. And how good the signal really is. Because I don't know how this works. I mean the signal coming from the 5200. I used the same AV mod in and it's it's okay. It's not bad. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see. Let's, let's just get started. Now, like I said, obviously I'm gonna clean this up later. I'm just, this is just a test to see how it looks, guys.
all right guys like i said it's not pretty but you know it'll work just for a test run until uh you know we, we actually see if this av mod will work with the 600 xl because really like i said i don't know this is just something i found online and it's the same as the uh, 2600 mod and all the other ones i've done so we'll we'll give it a shot definitely got some gel bars I'm not gonna lie but I mean that's not too bad that looks like a lot better than the fuzzy ass RF I used to have I'm gonna tell you that so I'm looking at it over here on the computer on the capture I'm looking at it up here actually it looks a lot better on the uh, on the screen or on the TV than it does well, the original capture looks pretty bad, but then it goes through like this filter I have, and it helps. So that looks pretty good. So yeah, a lot better signal. Now obviously once I clean this all up, it'll look a lot better too. But what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just kind of cut the cameras here. This is proof of concept. Um, the audio actually comes off of pin 2 too. And once I get everything all buttoned up and looking good, I'll show it to you guys and how it finished up. So. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so I got everything all kind of put together and buttoned up here. So let me go ahead and get you guys zoomed in so you can see what's going on. I should have cleaned up a little bit after I got done here. But uh, as you guys can see, I do have the mod installed. Let's get you zoomed in. So as you guys can see here, we got the video here, we got the audio here, we got the five volts here. Uh, I got the ground line coming down to a via right next to this chip that wasn't occupied, so it just made it real easy to do. And then I put the uh, two RCA jacks in the back and kind of just button it up just like that. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing together here. Actually, I don't have to really put it together. This plugged in here. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this thing turned on. I have it hooked up to the AV here. And as you guys, uh, guys can see, it just boots right up. No problem with that. Uh, let's go to a game I know has sound where I don't have to hit the start button and everything, I should say. And there we go. So it looks like the audio, the video, Everything is working on this game, so on the system. So awesome. I'm just happy that everything worked out the way it should have. Um, and it was just dodgy sockets. And while I was in here, I might as well have just done the, uh, the AV mod too. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to thank all my subscribers and all my viewers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like and the notification bell. That way you get notifications every time I drop new content like this. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have a good one. Peace out, y'all. Game over, man. It's game over.